for, for making me feel welcome and for, for treating me like family. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate Brother Hosmer and Sister Hosmer and their family. Amen. You have a great pastor. You know, there's two kinds of leaders in this world. There's two kinds of leaders in this in the church. There's leaders that gather disciples to themselves. And they make sure, they gather people to make sure that nobody will ever be greater than they are. And then there's leaders that will gather to themselves people. And they will do everything they can to make sure each one goes so much further than they ever could. Amen. And Brother Hosmer is that kind of leader. He cares about the, he cares about the people. He cares about the flock. And he wants to see each one of you go so far. Amen. I appreciate Brother Hosmer so much. I heard a statement that the hardest job in the world the hardest job in the world is being a pastor. The Bible says that, that shepherds, the pastors, they watch for our souls. And they have so much weight on them. And so please don't forget your pastor. I heard the second hardest job in the world. And it's right there with the first hardest job. Is being a pastor's wife. The second hardest job in the world. There's so much pressure, there's so much that they have to deal with. You know, husbands and wives, we don't, I'm not married, I, I know, but I know this is the way it is. But you don't want to keep anything from each other. You want to have someone to, to be able to tell everything to you that you can have for support. But there's things that a pastor cannot share with his wife, and there's things that a pastor's wife cannot share with her husband. And they have to bear that burden alone. Amen. Remember them in prayer. Hold them up every day. Amen. I'll pay you later. <laughs> I read or I heard that the third hardest job is being a leader of a country. The president of the United States has an easier job than a pastor. The Sori, Sori Daijin of Japan, the Prime Minister, has an easier job than a pastor. Amen. We have to pray for our leaders. Amen. Over the last few nights, I really feel like the Lord has dealt with each one of us about a couple things. First, we must love God. With everything we have. The second is that we must love others. The Bible says, as I mentioned last night, that in bearing one another's burdens, we fulfill the law of Christ. 
Amen. It says that on these two commandments, loving God and loving others, came all the law and the prophets. On, on the, these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. And if we do these two things, we are keeping all of the law of God. Amen. The Bible tells us that God is light. God is love. God is a spirit. These three are inseparable. Each of them are things that God is. And sometimes people will try to take God's love alone. And it's become very popular to preach about God's love. But they try to throw away God's light. His holiness. And they try to get rid of his spirit. They don't really want him to direct how his service goes. But if you get rid of his light, and you get rid of his spirit, you really don't have God's love. And we're preaching a lie. We must have all three. His and His Spirit. Amen. An easy way to check whether we're loving others. I believe what Brother Hosmer said. There will be revival throughout Japan. But how do we feel when another church is blessed? If we're proud, we'll feel a competitive spirit. Oh, they have five people who got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Why did we have it here? Or do we rejoice with them? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Of course, we all have a burden for our home area. But how do we feel when, when someone else's burden is being blessed? Amen. Continuing on today, I feel like this is really the key to being able to do the first two things. The Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit, the first one it mentions is love. If we're full of the Spirit, we will be full of love. Right. And if we're not full of the Spirit, we will not have Christ-like love. Amen. I don't know about you, but, but when I got the Holy Ghost, I didn't have an enemy in the world. I loved everybody. When my grandpa got the Holy Ghost in America, he came from a very rough background. Very rough. There had been a, a situation and he had told a man that the next time he saw him he would kill him. And he carried a gun with him at all times to make sure that if he saw him he would. He was filled with hate. Filled with bitterness. But he went to a tent revival. And he got the Holy Ghost. And he had not seen that man in six months. Since that situation happened, he, he looked for the guy but could not find him. 
But the day after he got the Holy Ghost, he was walking down the street, looking in a storefront. And he literally ran into the guy. And he ran into him and backed up. And the guy looked at him and he saw who he had just run into. And the guy started shaking. Because he knew he was about to die. And my grandpa later said when he saw the guy, he felt such a compassion. He felt such a love. And the guy started backing away. And my grandpa started walking towards him. And he was saying, Man, you should have been where I was last night. Man, I got the Holy Ghost last night. Man, you need the Holy Ghost. God loves you. He can change your life like He changed your life. Why? He didn't have to pray for days and days. To have love. Because he was full of the Spirit. It was a byproduct. It was a byproduct. If you're full of the Spirit, you will be full of love. Amen. We've got to be full of the Spirit. Amen. Galatians 6 and verses 7 and 8 will be reading. Amen. There is a law of the universe that what we spend our time on will improve that. Brother Daniel didn't get up here having never played the piano and started playing that well. But he can play like that one because he's practiced. He spent time playing. And what we spend our time at We'll become good at. But you can be good at something. And if you stop practicing, if you never do it, before long, you will lose that ability. People lose the ability to speak a language because they haven't done it for so long. People who used to be able to play an instrument really well can no longer play it because they didn't practice. Amen. We will become good at what we practice. And in Galatians verse, chapter 6, verses 7 and 8, it says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. すなわち、自分の肉に巻くものは、肉から滅びを刈り取り、霊に巻くものは、霊から永遠の命を刈り,刈り取ることだ。You will reap what you sow. あなたは巻いた種は、あの、刈り取ります。Today, if you're here, 今日あなたがここにいて、あなたはできるだけ良い種を巻こうとしているなら、But you're struggling. だけど苦しんでいる。You feel like the devil is fighting you. Have faith. Trust God. You will reap what you have sown. 
But if we're not sowing good seeds, if we're sowing to the flesh, there's absolutely no way that we can reap good things. Amen. If you sow corn, コーン、トウモロコシ。トウモロコシの種をまくなら。We But they have mystery flavor ones. And you have no idea what's inside. And sometimes they're really good. And sometimes they're not. You never know what you're going to get. But there are no mystery seeds. You will reap. Amen. There are no mystery seeds. Amen. We cannot. I'm sorry. We can't have it both ways. We can't reap good and reap something else, and we can't reap bad. We can't just reap or sow whatever we want. And reap the things that we really want. Amen. In 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, starting in verse 14, it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Amen. And this is a popular verse that we use to preach of, on marriage. But this also applies to us. Sometimes we'll try to, throughout the week, do our own thing. Live how we want to live. And then on Sunday, We'll come to church and worship God. Try to feel His presence. But we cannot sow to the flesh during the week. And read from the Spirit on Sunday. Amen. If you have been struggling feeling the presence of God in church on Sunday or, or in any service, You will get out of it what you put into it. That's good, man. If we go to church and we're full, full of carnality, full of the flesh, We'll have a hard time feeling the presence of God breaking through. Yes, sir. If they don't sing the perfect songs, we can't feel the presence of God. And we blame them because they missed it. But if you're full of the Spirit during the week, David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And you're looking forward to, to being in the house of God. And you're full of the Spirit. They can sing anything. 
私が聖書大学に行っていた時私はスーリーパケツ行ったんですいた時だったんですかなり気をつけないと冷たくなってしまうんですそして私の父さんが宣教の校に行っていました And he was preaching at the church that I, I was at. And he, he talked about what you put into a service, what you put into things is what you'll get out of it. その時に私は思ったんです。私は変わりたい。私は変わりたい。私は変わりたい。私は変わりたい。私は変わりたい。私は変わりたい。私は変わりたい。私は変わりたい。私は変わりたい。私は変わりたい。私は変わりたい。私
They're in opposite direction. And if we're walking one way, we're not walking the other way. If we're walking towards God, we're not walking towards the world. Amen. And it's the same thing that it's saying here. What communion has light with darkness? They're opposite. Can't be going towards darkness. And be walking in light. Amen. It is so important. The, so, the seeds that we sow. Amen. Sometimes I think we kind of we kind of forget that. We feel like we graduate from from initial salvation. And we kind of get back in the groove of trying to do things our own way. Amen. We can't be full of light and darkness at the same time. Jesus said, make the tree good and the fruit good. Or make the tree bad and the fruit bad. A good tree will not bear bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot bring forth good fruit. We cannot be full of Christ and myself at the same time. John the Baptist said, I must decrease so that he can increase. I must decrease so that he can increase. This bottle of water is full. Caps off. <laughs> and if I want to put something else in, I have to take something out first. It's the same way with us. We have a limited amount of time. And what we spend our time on is what we'll get. And so if I've been doing a certain set of things, and I don't have I feel that I don't have enough God in my life I need to take something else out and put more of him in Amen John the Baptist really had it right we must decrease so that he can increase in us. Amen. Matthew 6, 24 through 33. It says, No man can serve two masters. So either he will hate the one and love the other. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't read the whole thing. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and man. Amen. And I want to pause right here. I want to thank you for sticking with me this weekend in my preaching. This is not milk. This is steak. It's hard to digest. It's hard, it's hard for a baby to digest steak. Amen, but I believe God sees a mature church sitting here. 
でも今ここにいるのは大人になった教会です And an adult cannot survive on milk. そして大人というのはミルクだけでは生きることはできません私たちはステーキが必要です Amen. Amen. Verse 25 